A recent study by the National Institutes of Health found kids who'd been in top quality childcare scored slightly higher academically when they were teens. And there were other benefits as well, as Dr. Robbie Ludwood, contributor to care.com, is here to tell us. You've got also some advice for us on finding the best right. child care for our kids. And we're looking really at toddlers at this point. Right, and I think the key here too is a happy parent equals a happy child. So you really need to think of something that works for the parents and that is really convenient. That's convenient, that makes you feel good That's too. cost effective. That's cost effective. Has good social options. So how do you go about, first of all, determining which type of, chi type of child care is going to best for your family? Well, I think you need to look at the cost. You know, clearly with a daycare center, the cost is a lot cheaper. So that's a great, you know, that's great for kids. It's great for parents. But if you have a job where you're working lots of crazy hours, you may need somebody who's like a second pair of hands. And that's where a babysitter can come in and really works out well for people Someone in that who's situation. More, who's more in, in home care. So you want to look at the cost, look at what your needs are. When you're looking at, let's say you discover, you, you decide some sort of a daycare facility, whether it's an mm -hmm. in-home daycare or more of a standalone facility is best for you. What right. do you look for when you go to that place? You want to look at the ratio of teachers to kids because you want there to be enough kids and also you don't want there to be a high turnover. You want an open door policy so that parents can come in and look and see what's going on. You want to ask about holidays and sick day policies. And another thing you want to consider is in terms of just how convenient is it for mm -hmm. you? Do you need something that is close to your home so that either parent can drop off and pick up the child? Because drop off and pick up can be a great source of <laughs> angst. It's a challenge. <laughs> Do you want something that is close to your job so that if your child is sick or you need to work overtime, you can get to the daycare center a lot easier? And it's really so important to, to visit a place, too, because that's going to give you a feel for it. You can look around, see how clean it is, see right. what the toys Talk are like. Talk to other parents, see what the philosophy is. You know, you want to get a sense that it's a really good place for your child, a good place for you, and that you feel comfortable and always, as with anything else, keep the communication open with you and the teachers that are there. So that's if you're looking for to drop them off somewhere. Right. But if your situation tends to be one where it's better to have an right. in-home caregiver, I know you say there are certain things you should go through before you even meet someone, when you talk to them on the phone, you need to make sure that they meet certain criteria. What are right. those? Are they flexible with the hours that you really need them for? I mean, we've both been in situations where, you know, people check out because the hours really don't work for mm -hmm. them. Do you need someone who drives? Do you need somebody who's bilingual? Do you need someone who cooks? You need to think of a babysitter almost as your second wife, your second right. pair of hands. And they, you know, is this the person that you really want taking care of your child when you're not there? And be upfront about all of that in the very you beginning now how, no matter you how uncomfortable have it is to, otherwise it just doesn't make any sense we always know we should we should ask for references but then yeah. I think it's hard you get these references and you say okay great how was she, he or yeah. she okay and then what else do you ask what are the most important questions why did this person leave you know I think that's an important question um, you know did they not meet your needs were they not good with the kids and then ask you know how how were they with your children you want to get a sense of who this person is and try to get as much of a picture as you can which is a little bit tough in terms of how they are with your kids you mean how engaged they are how they how discipline engaged, do they stimulate their your child do they read with them do they do homework um, do they take them on activities how involved and active are they all things to take into account um, how important is age? How important are things like bringing in a family member? Are those ever a good idea or is that? Well, I mean, you want to look at age, but listen, if someone has a lot of good experience, that has a lot of value. If a family member is willing and is able to come in and help your child, great. But you can't treat your family member like a hired help. You can't say, I need you to clean and I need you to do right. this. I mean, you have to work in a different way. You say that if you do bring someone into your home who is perhaps not a family member, you have to treat it as a business. It is a business. I mean, it's more than a business relationship, but you need that contract because people are coming from different places when you're getting hired. So you need that black and white go-to whenever there's a question. It just helps keep everybody happy. All right. Some great advice as always, Dr. Thank Robbie you. Ludwig. Thanks.